About one year ago, I had this crazy idea. What if I started doing open research on the foundations of physics right here on YouTube? Actual research with me blatantly not having a clue about what I'm doing. And so I did. I opened a second channel and after one year, I think it's time to draw some conclusions. Uh, did it work? Did it not work? What worked? Should I continue? First of all, let me give you a little bit of background in case you don't know what I do. I lead a project called Assumptions of Physics that aims to find a minimal set of physically meaningful assumptions from which the laws and their mathematical framework can be rigorously redirived. Ambitious? Yes, but that's not the main problem. The problem is that it's very, very, very interdisciplinary. You need to square many details from different uh, branches of math, physics, computer science, statistics, you name it. For example, what is the correct topological vector space to represent the probability measures for a classical field theory? I have no idea. That's a topic in between analysis and measure theory. But I need to solve it so that I can define an entropy over the space of field configuration. That means extending information theory over function spaces. Uh, has somebody done that? I haven't seen that. I have no idea. But I need it. And I needed to extend the geometric and physical meaning of the action principle to field theories so that I can finally understand what the Lagrangian for general relativity is really about, what it is describing. And this is the physical problem, general relativity, regression, field theory. So you see, you need to put all these details together. And it takes too many lives to know all these details, and I barely have one. Ideally, I'd been an expert in function analysis, one in probability theory, one in classical mechanics, information theory, general relativity, fluid dynamics, chemistry, and so on and on and on and on. But academia is not set up for this type of broad interdisciplinary endeavors. Physicists mostly talk to other physicists, mathematicians, let me rephrase that, general relativists mostly talk to other general relativists, algebraic topologists mostly talk to other algebraic topologists. So if I want to get this job done, I kind of need a different setup. And since my background is in software engineering, my feeling is that we need some sort of open source community around the project. In fact, all our work is already on GitHub. But how do I build that? So last year I thought, I have already a YouTube channel, this one, that I used to advertise results of the project, which has given me more visibility than all our academic papers combined. So I said, let's start another channel more geared toward research. Maybe some random person will help, like for open source software project. And here's what I did and how it went. The first thing I tried was to make a couple of videos with conjectures or uh, tasks to be done. The first video was about a conjecture I had for a number of years. Since I have noticed that a lot of quantum analogs appear in classical mechanics uh, simply by putting a lower bound on the entropy, which, by the way, is simply the third law of thermodynamics, I became convinced that most of the difference between classical and quantum mechanics is in the low entropy range. Ergo, if I take quantum states at high enough entropy, they should start to look classical. Now, the issue is that I didn't have the right background, especially in quantum mechanics in phase space, which is where it's easier to see these things, to see this classical limit. About a month and 10 days after I put out that video, an atomic experimentalist from Austria, Michele Landini, contacted me, complimented my lack of knowledge, and by November, we got a preprint out. Still under peer review, it always takes too long, but to me, the, the result is there. The idea is that the mathematical limit of h bar that goes to zero, instead of taking uh, states to infinite entropy, takes the state of the pure state, so the reference, to minus infinity. Much like when you take c that goes to infinity for the relativistic limit, it's not that the speed of light is infinite, it's that your speed is so low that the speed of light seems very, very large. Anyway, you can read the preprint and I'll make a video at some point, but this was clearly a success. I would not have the result if I didn't post the video. And the funny thing, I only realized how crazy this whole thing was when I was preparing the, our presentation for conferences. And I'm realizing I should have made more of those videos. So watch out for more help me prove my conjecture type video, and maybe I'll have some for mathematicians specifically. Also, I'm probably going to try something else this year. Some of my videos on the channel, like the Geometry is Entropy one that seems very popular, do not have a corresponding paper. Very often, I work on these ideas and their corresponding math because I'm working on a bigger goal. 
But then I make a video because uh, that little insight is a nice insight and should be shared. The issue is that writing a paper about it takes a lot of time. And it's not fun time for me. You see, it's not enough to have a result. You have to figure out which community may like the result. Is it physics, math, philosophy, which subfield? How do you frame it within a debate that engages the community? What citations do they need to see? What completely unrelated work do you need to describe to be taken seriously? I really hate this part, and this is why I'll never be a real academic. I'm an engineer, I like to get stuff done, and preferably with people that know more than me so that I get to learn from them. Anyway, the point is that I'll keep a list of these idea videos in the off chance that somebody, another researcher, professor, student, or someone who left academia, wants to co-author a paper. Otherwise, it will be buried in our open access book where all the results are, and it will only exist by itself on YouTube. Another thing that I tried was live streaming. Initially, I wanted to essentially dedicate a few hours to work on something specific. I have enough ideas to do reverse physics for quantum mechanics, but I'm always distracted by other things, by other commitment. So for a few weeks, I said, I'll write that part of the book during a live on Saturday morning. Saturday morning, real-time research. That didn't quite work. The issue is that if I'm not prepared and I don't have a clear task, it's basically very hard to do. And the whole point was that I didn't have time to prepare. So maybe I could spend some time working more on the outline during the week and then I'll fill in in the live. Uh, we'll see. I have no clear ideas there. Again, it should be obvious that this is totally new ground for me. I have no model to emulate. So if you have practical ideas of how to make this open research on the assumptions of physics work, do leave a comment. Oh, and like and subscribe. You have to say that on YouTube now or your video gets cancelled. Okay, since real-time research was maybe too optimistic, we tried to simply talk about open topics in the current research I'm doing. A general structure for spaces of statistical ensembles. That way I actually had more things to say because each week I'm figuring out more things. And it kind of worked mostly because there were a couple of regular, to be a scrum, a meme, but something unplanned happened which was great. While discussing some details, someone from the chat asked me to clarify which category I was using, heighting algebra, locales, frames, and I very openly said I wasn't able to figure out the difference. And I'd love for somebody to tell me how frames are different from locales and how they relate to the things that we already have. Well, this person, Brandon, agreed to come on the live stream the following week. He actually went through the relevant parts of our work and put it in the context of category theory. And this was so useful. Thanks again, Brandon. This is a clear example of how a knowledgeable hobbyist can be a lot more helpful to our research project than a professional researcher. You see, people in academia are extremely busy and barely have the time to work on their own research. So most of the time they do not reply to me or can provide only limited support. Maybe give some references would take months to go through and find the two sentences I needed. So if through the channel I can find random people that help me fill in these gaps, even just confirming that something that I don't think has been done, like information theory and function spaces, has in fact not been done, that is super useful, truly a convenience. Now, this only happened once, but I think it's my fault. I never really prepared the discussion, so it wasn't always clear what was going to be discussed. So maybe if I plan my work better, it's going to have more success. Also, I've created a form to fill out in case someone has specific expertise and wants to help. Link in the description. That way, if I get organized, hopefully, maybe I can advertise what I'm going to discuss to the people who are relevant. And maybe one of these can actually help me get organized. And everything, I think, worked really well. From time to time, students contact me with questions. Last month, a student, Robbie, had so many interesting questions of the mathematical foundations of quantum mechanics that I said, look, let's have a live about them. Other people are going to be interested. And we did. And I think it worked out really great. So if people want to come with questions about the mathematical underpinning of classical or quantum mechanics, the relationship between math and physics, whatever foundational question, please leave a comment and we can schedule more lives like that. 
Lastly, we also had a couple of lives with some guests that work on topics that are, in some sense, related to the project. We had Josh Hunt, a philosopher who is also very pragmatic and interested in stances that are, let's say, more ontology agnostic. We had Ara Katicha, whose work on entropic dynamics uh, rhymes with some of the work uh, we do on ensemble spaces. We have uh, Joseph Tubi Smith, who is the creator of FISLEAN, which aims at using proof validation tools for physics. Uh, and I think those uh, work relatively well. So I'll try to have more guests. Uh, and in particular, I'll try to have experimentalists on, because a lot of people that work in foundations of quantum mechanics are fairly disconnected to experimental practice. So I think it would be a good idea. So, all in all, given that I had uh, no idea of uh, what I was doing, and still I don't, uh, it's been working relatively well. I got uh, uh, the result on the classical limit. I found a couple of interesting people that are now active uh, on the Discord server. Uh, somebody explained to me the difference between locales and frames and how they relate to the work we were doing. So. So I think I'll continue, at least for the time being. Uh, I still don't know what I'm doing, but I think it's like uh, in point-and-click adventure games. Uh, you try random things, uh, and one is bound to work. <laughs>